Happy birthday to Happy birthday, Eric. Eric. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How old are you now? Oh wait. Wait, before I answer that question, I'm still doing my <laughs> my my tech. Your tech. Tech setup. Um do, am I getting echo? No. No. I mean, I think it would be better if you had your mic a little bit closer, but... I'm very really please you. Everybody, it's my birthday. It's his birthday. Oh, wait, continue speaking. Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Hello, I'm speaking normally. Okay, yeah, oh, that's wait, good. That's speaking. good. Okay. Uh, for food today, I have uh? it's my birthday and it's breakfast. Oh! Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh, that's okay. a dream. A profiterol. I forget I that the it. camera is on um, manual focus, so I can't like do what those YouTubers do when they do this. <laughs> is this on manual? Wow. I, I hope you can share this with me. Actually, I can't eat many of this because uh, Luke probably wants some. Okay, I have like a like a hot take on professor roles. Oh, oh, what's so oh. good about them, bro? Oh shit! <laughs> oh my lord! I don't understand like why people are like so in love with professor roles. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. yeah. <laughs> but but seriously, like, what is so good about professor roles? They are, let me show you. They're Moorish, so you have one and you want another one. And exactly. they're just a perfect amount of chocolate, pastry, and cream. Mm -hmm. They're like Pringles. And man. actually, I can oh. make them from scratch. But like, Ooh. they. I they, know, secret. There's so, there's so much air. <laughs> exactly. They're like, you know how people eat popcorn, right? No, because like I sweet, don't. <laughs> it's the sweet version of popcorn. But it's just like a ball of air. And then, like, a hint of chocolate and a bit of cream. And they're just air. Perfect amount of cream. Mm. And there's, like, the same thing with eclairs, too. Because, like, I, I, that's just... A long version of profiterole. But you can get really cool eclair flavours. Long, long version. But it's just long. air. Long. Yeah, long. but it's, like, sweet air. <laughs> It's yeah. like sweet air. Mm -hmm. You know how some people love croissants? 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 Croissants. croissants is different though, because like when you chew it down, it like it's it's not as airy as um, Professor Rolls and Eclairs. Airy right. Professor Rolls is a result of great craftsmanship <laughs> from the patisserie. <laughs> patisserie. Because the trick is, since I know how to make it from scratch, the trick is that you don't actually put in any baking powder. Um, you only use egg and flour, and it's the technique in your wrist to actually create the air. Yeah. Whereas a lot of oh. recipes, you add like baking powder or self-raising or something to... But it's the wrist action. Yeah, yeah? we love the wrist the action. Motion. It's the motion <laughs> in the ocean. The motion in the ocean. <laughs> Right, Eric, how old are you? Um, how, how old do you think I am, people of YouTube and wherever yes. else you're watching this? <laughs> comment below. Yes, comment down oh, below. Yeah. <laughs> Just <type it> down. <laughs> uh, if you're watching oh, on shit, YouTube, you can comments. type it in the comments or on Spotify. I, I, I don't know, on Spotify. But... Yeah, I don't know if you can comment on Spotify. I don't think you actually can. I think you can leave reviews. Oh, but okay. I, oh, maybe I maybe that'll be the review for this um, for this podcast episode. Yes. <laughs> Eric, Eric's age. Yes. I'm actually. Right, and uh, if you are coming back uh, from commenting on uh, what Eric's age is, uh, how old are you, Eric, right now? Because it is your birthday. I'm 35. <gasps> Mid 30s. That's it. I'm uh, basically practically dead. You're. Oh my god. <laughs> You're practically oh, ancient. 
Uh, what? Curtis had the best years, though. For, is it? Yeah, we got more money, we got time, more freedom. I don't have more any wisdom. time. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to when we were like teenagers, we always had to go to school and do all the extracurricular stuff. Is that really how you view it? I view my 30s as the best years of my life. Huh. So I far. So far. And it's getting better. So far, I would say that the best time of my life is um, my, hmm, my 21. Your 21s. 21. Hmm. 20 between my 20, between when I was 21 to 25-ish. Yeah. Why is that? Um, I was in the military and I was learning a lot of stuff. I was finding out things about myself that I didn't know were possible. Mm. Um, and yeah, I was just, I felt like I was being challenged in all sorts of different ways that were healthy and actually strangely painful, but also enjoyable. <laughs> Not painful as in like emotionally mm. painful, but like body wise, like physically. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So physically Quite. challenged. Yeah. So maybe you need to bring some of that back in your life now. Maybe do something that is going to be physically challenging. So you feel that sense of how you felt when you were in between those years. Uh, speaking of physically challenging. <laughs> not what? Maybe the yesterday. <laughs> my okay, so is, yesterday. My <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, John, what happened yesterday was Eric and I trained together. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I am so much in pain right now. <laughs> I and thought I was this was like, going somewhere else. We can do one hour, easy. Um, obviously, I'm very serious at the gym anyway, so. Mm. Yes, yeah, so we went and we did upper body. So we oh. did, um, like, lap pull-downs, these raises, side raises, oh, bench damn. press. Oh yeah, we did. We did bench press. Yeah, today. bench press was insane. We did thirty kg, half our body weight. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I'm so proud of us. Wow, well mm -hmm. done, you guys. I, I, yeah. I gave myself like a little, like a, not. I didn't. I didn't want to go ham on it. Yeah, because first. Yeah. <laughs> first it's day. true. If you go too ham on your first day, <laughs> then you f feel sick, and it's not a nice feeling. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I kept getting lightheaded to be fair, like each time. Yeah. The whole time it's like I'm so lightheaded. I'm like, one more rep. <laughs> I, I like, get the exact on. same thing. You know, I have noticed that when I go to the gym and like when I do a little bit too hard on the machines, oh, I I lose hearing. Oh in like Wait, one what? of my ears. I don't know. I just Well, um. I don't lose it completely, but everything becomes muffled in my ears. Okay, is it because your heart's beating really fast and you can hear boom, 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 boom? It's not even like I can't even hear my beat, my heartbeat. Oh, <laughs> it's just everything is just muffled. Are you breathing or holding a breath? I am breathing, I think. Okay, <laughs> when you do, because when you're working really hard, sometimes <clears throat> people like unconsciously just hold their breath in oh, too much. Yeah. yeah, but you could train with us, but the fee to get in is fifteen pounds, and then. Yeah. 15 pounds. A month? No. no a day, day pass. Oh. A month is 25 pounds. Yeah. So I I just signed up for a month and then... Because um... you're away for the week, but I was thinking I could train with Eric in the morning before work. <clears throat> hey, you could... Oh, wait. I was going to say you could use my pass, but they do... No, finger... there's no pass. It's fingerprint. It's clever. It's just clever. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to take your fingerprint, Eric. Mission Impossible huh? style. I'm going to have oh. to take your mm -hmm. fingerprint. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I did oh, that yeah. now. Oh, no, I just do it like this. Yeah, so. Like I'm pointing. Um, yeah, sorry, John. Um, ye yesterday. No, not yet. So for tomorrow, um, as you guys would know, <laughs> I don't know why this will be on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. So I just drop Basil off tomorrow. Yeah. At 8 a.m. 
Yeah. Okay. I'll drop him off at eight. Cool. Oh, look after my baby, please. Uh, remember all of his essentials. His I'm bringing uh, his bed. His bed. How big is his bed? Is it like the massive one at work? No, 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 not that one. It's, okay. It's like a circular thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I swear to God, if Basil takes Cookie's bed, <laughs> he probably would. <laughs> he probably would. Um, oh, Cookie's got loads of beds. Cookie does have loads of beds. So, oh, okay. yeah, he might take one. <gasps> Yeah, that means they're going to be home, right? So you can look after Basil. Yes. And then I'll have a peace of mind running around in the mud yeah. knowing that my child is safe. Yes. I mean, like, even if I'm not home, my sister and my family can also take care of Basil. Oh, you guys. <laughs> thank, thank you. And thank my you. sister being the more active one, she can take him on walks. No, 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 don't take him for a walk. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll no. tell her that. His... I thought Cookie don't go for a walk. Cookie, yeah. um, with my sister, she he, she does. <laughs> with me, oh, no. Yeah, uh, she doesn't have to, but I mean, she wants to. She can. Just mm. don't let him off the lead. Really. Oh yeah, mm. I'll I'll tell yeah. her that. Yeah, we went to um, <coughs> Osterley. Um, Luke and I went oh. to Osterley yesterday. Oh um, wow! What's there to park. do in Osterley? That's like a big park there. Is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh. And there's a a house like a Osterley house. Mm. Apparently, um, uh, it was used as a backdrop for Batman. Mm. Which one? Yeah. Let me check. I don't know. Christian Bale, it, Robert Pattinson. Batman Returns. <clears throat> it's he did say, but I'm basically just love struck. <laughs> oh, so just the oh. lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, just keep talking. Yeah, just keep t- <laughs> oh, Dark Knight Rises, apparently. Oh. Yeah, let me show you. Um, here it is. Maybe you can put it as a overlay on, on, um, on the edit. Are you putting Wait, it on? Where? Discord? What's the podcast? Yeah. There you go. So Wayne's Manor was that? Oh, Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. Wait, that was Wayne's Manor. I don't know. I need to, I need to watch it all over again. I've not I've not watched the Dark Knight races, so <clears throat> yeah. Went that way. Uh, we took Basil for a really long walk. Uh, he Ooh. seemed to be really mad for it. Both, both him and Basil. Yeah. <laughs> And we took some photos together. Like he 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 bought a little camera, like a while ago, like mm. RX, RX Sony RX one hundred four Mark four something like that. And mm. we just um, yeah, we just took some photos. How very oh, cute! Right. How very yeah. cute! Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. With Basil as well. Yeah, so mm. I like a picture of them. And I was gonna put it on Instagram. My boys. <laughs> <laughs> my boys yeah that was so cute oh, no, do it do it i like it um yeah for your birthday yeah. as well yeah oh my boys <laughs> no actually you know I did, I did say that um the best time of my life was when i was 21 to 25 mm. i would say skip to 34 yeah <laughs> skip to 35 skip to 35 it's only just yeah. begun yeah i hope yeah. so yeah. So, Wait, what, what do you mean you hope so? Wait, what? Wait, sorry, I said yes, but what did I say? Wait, it's only begun. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rewinding to what you said earlier, you haven't watched The Dark Knight? No. Why? Are you interested in watching The Dark Knight? I used The Dark Knight. The, uh, that was like... Heath Ledger. <gasps> Great cinematography. Great music. Christian Bale's Great Batman acting. was my Batman, and it was the like, the best Batman. Oh no, I I do. Was it Heath Ledger? Which was the Heath Ledger one? No, Heath Ledger was Joker. Oh, Joker, yeah. yeah, yeah. I will watch that because, uh, yeah, I do. I do like Heath Ledger. I saw his. I saw Brokeback Mountain. I think probably the only one I saw of Heath Ledger. Oh no, no, I saw um, Knight's Tale when Heath Ledger mm. was on it. I have no yeah, watched that. 
That's quite cool. Yeah. What, what's the night's title? Um, was it Brothers Grimm? Wait. Oh, he was also on Brothers Grimm. Let me check. I'm not going to lie. I think The Dark Knight is the only Heath Ledger movie that I've watched. But oh. fantastic I performance. I watched The Night Tale. I think that was when he pretends to be a knight. You know when knights are jousting and he yes. wanted to take part in it, but he's oh. not a knight, so he had to pretend. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen that as well. Yeah. Mm, and coming back I... to me. Oh, and Brothers Grimm. Okay, I really like that Brothers Grimm. Yeah. What's Brothers, Brothers Grimm about? So Brothers Grimm are the two brothers that supposedly had written many of the original stories for, <clears throat> or collected the stories for like Disney. So the original Cinderella, the in original um, uh, Hansel and Gretel, I think. Yeah. Let me just double check. I probably just made that up. Brothers Grimm. Oh. Brothers. It's been a while, like it's been a while since the last since I lost. We should do the movie night. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. So <clears throat> either that mine or yours, Eric. Yep. The Grimm's fairy tales, according to Wikipedia, um, is known by children as children's and household tales. So they're a collection of German fairy tales. What are German fairy tales? What's our um, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> and there's um, oh, what's the other German ones? Uh... The oh, I don't know. Han the only ones I kind of know from this is Hansel and oh, Cinderella. Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella. Uh, Little Red Cap, which is Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, there's uh... quite a few. <coughs> <coughs> The three languages. Oh, this is quite cool, actually. Um, the Elves and the Shoemaker. I remember... I don't think this was a Disney film, but I remember reading this when I was a child. Because um, I had to do... When I was in year four, I had to do, like, this flip book project where, you know, when you open a page, like, yeah. things will come come up. Like, yeah. Almost like a mm -hmm. 2.5D. I oh, was yeah. in four at this point. I had to make like a 2.5D version of this book and I had to like put together folders. I don't know how I made it, but yeah, that, that was quite good. I had to draw and then cut them out and then put them on. Snow White apparently was also a, a Brothers Grimm tale. <coughs> and Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin, yeah, that's the one. The Golden I don't remember Goose, the story at all. Which I guess is... Um, uh, is that a bit like? Hmm. Yeah. The goose that lays a golden egg. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Oh, I've heard about that one. Okay. But there's um... also Chinese like proverbs. The proverbs. Oh, of those ones. Yeah, like similar ones. My dad used to tell me the stories of them. Wow, that's quite a like, lot. Actually, a lot. If you go on Wikipedia, there's huge amount um and some of these have been made <coughs> as um little books little booklets that children would read in school so i remember like some of these names are quite familiar to me but i don't like fully remember seeing them either on cartoons or um yeah somewhere else <coughs> i wanted to do um like recent, oh hello! Uh, recently, I wanted to do once because my once my masters is finished, I want to do like a passion project of illustrating Ooh. books, illustrating oh, stories. That's that was so cute. good. That's yeah. a very cute idea. That's so good. Yeah. So, one day. One day. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be next. It'll be next year, no? No, end of this year. You'll be done. In two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Let's yeah, go. so it'll be this year. This year. Yes, yeah. year. Very I need soon. To sort out, I need to start out my esports curriculum for when I'm teaching in September. 
but that that won't take long. Once oh. that's going, maybe around October time, I'll like do my my um my passion projects. Exciting stuff! Exciting. Yeah, stuff. So exciting. And then my, maybe one day we can get a logo. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's gonna be a thunder pipeline. God damn it! I'll prioritize that. Just actually. can't you just do it on Canva? I don't know. Um, like, is it Canva? They have their templates. You can just do yeah. add oil. No? Uh, not yeah. the design. Well, I don't know. Not the design that I wanted. God oh. wants a big oak one because he's little precious like that. We'll just go on a Canva and edit the color. It's bespoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we kind of like really digressed because I'm really scatty today, like usual. Um, I'm really hungry we... today. I'm scatty. Yeah. Talking about what's the what's the tea? Uh, what is the tea? Um, oh, I've recently watched The Flash. Have you guys oh, yeah. watched The Flash? I saw that. No. Oh, spoilers. I don't know anything about it. Sorry, I can't contribute to this conversation. Oh, no. <laughs> it's about Ezra Miller. <clears throat> is it Ezra Miller? Yeah, Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ezra Miller. And, and it's uh... bombing on the <clears throat> block, bo in the block, block office. No, box office. It's bombing on box office, oh, yeah. apparently. Uh, oh? There was a lot of cameos that I didn't expect. But, um... I'll spoil yeah. it, Tanoda. Yeah, 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 I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. I want to see the new Joy, the Joyrider <clears throat> film. Joyrider? Joyride? It's like a full East Asian cast. Oh, I think. oh yes, with the, with the girls. Yes, I want to go and see that. Yeah. That was What's on... Um, that's one of the trailers in the Barbie movie yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Barbie movie at midnight. Oh, the dream! Yeah. Did you wear pink as well? Dream. You have to dress up a bit. Like, have a little I, bit pink somewhere. We actually didn't. Because we were, we, uh, we only decided to go for a walk yesterday. Oh, okay. Spontaneous. Um, and then... Because he was meant to come home. Well, he went home. Because he had to go and take his mum somewhere this morning, but then when we were walking, I suddenly remembered that um, Barbie was on. Like it was a Friday yesterday, and it was mm. the twenty first. Mm. <laughs> so I said, "Would you like yeah. to go and watch Barbie tonight?" Oh. How how was Barbie? Um, it's. I have to describe it like it's it's. I feel like you have to be high to fully enjoy it. <laughs> huh? Wait, what? <clears throat> no spoilers. It, it, the story is quite forced. Oh. Yeah. Forced in a way, in, in, not in a bad way, but like you have to just suspend belief, disbelief, that they go through the Barbie world and the real world and oh. they're able to do it like just because they can and you have the um bobby goes to the real world to to do something mm -hmm. and then somehow the mattel ceo and his team also goes to the barbie world spoiler warnings by the way <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of like have to make sense when they go okay yeah, yeah i'll just i'll just I'll just take that as fact, and then we'll go with it. Yeah, you have to kind of just sit and be passive and just soak in the information rather than thinking, why did that happen? How did that happen? Mm. Yeah. Um, and it, nothing massive happens in it other than kind of like, uh, not other than, but there's a lot of female empowerment in it. Mm. And... Um, breaking down or making a comment about patriarchy, patriarchy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I'm not gonna tell you more because it is part of the the. I I didn't I didn't so there's like a a villain in it, but I didn't. Is it Ken? I didn't see that. Don't spoil. <laughs> Don't ask any questions. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. Because <laughs> it could be Ken. The... You got. Oscar nomination, right? Or apparently because of his acting. Did he? He might get an Oscar nomination, yeah. Who? 
Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Oh. I. It. <laughs> for me, like it, it felt like it was um. It was like a high school production mixed with Wes Anderson because it's so saturated. Oh, oh yeah, I can oh. imagine the saturatedness. Yeah. It's so yeah, um pink, like and pastel. Mind blowingly weird. Now the question I like, is: I think I like that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Like it, I, it was just like you, you just have to go with it and take it for what you're seeing. Um, Margarove is really cute in it. There's quite a lot of um, sex education characters in it. Oh, yeah, like the like oh yeah, the one who looks like Margot Robbie. Yes, yeah, yeah, so she's yeah. in it, and I was like, oh, "That's clever." Yay. Um, because, I saw an interview of that. Yeah, because there's quite a lot of um, <laughs> Barbies in it, um, and I, when Sex Education became like really big and famous, people were saying that, yeah. "Oh my god, Emma Mackey looks like uh, Margot Robbie." It became a meme, and then yeah. they got casted together. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was I just, okay. That's that's clever. That makes sense. That, Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, the uh, Otis's boyfriend, uh, boyfriend, uh, Otis's best friend is in it. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name in 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 real life and in such sex education. Yeah. Um, the guy who plays Adam in sex oh, education. Oh, really? Is in it. Yeah. See, um, John, we need to like audition for sex education. <laughs> Seriously, they need <coughs> they need more Chinese. <coughs> He's Asian on, the, on sex yeah, education, right? Have. There's like no representation. I mean, there was a casting like a while ago, <laughs> and it was like all the way up north. So, yeah, and it's also the. I last... would do it. It's in Wales, right? Um, I it's the last season. So, oh, yeah. season. so missed it. Missed my chance. Wait, does House of Dragon have Chinese people in it, other than John being an extra? <laughs> uh. No. Uh, there's a few Asian people. It's not really the universe, though, for Asian people in it. But not yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, the the guy who wrote it could have at least. Um, I think in Game of Thrones there was a uh, Asian red woman. Was there red woman being the like the witch? Mm. Yeah, it was okay. like at the end though. I think I can't remember. Yeah, not remember. But yeah, Asians yeah, need looked... to be uh, represented in the in the. I, strangely, universe. with all this black versus mm. white sort of identity representation um, issues, the yellows, if you want to call it that way, <laughs> seem to be. No one's uh, really chatting about us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's almost like, <coughs> like, um, it's only black and white that matters. Yeah, but, but they forget that you know, China has like six billion. We are minority. Billion. We are majority, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, major our majority. Yeah, like they need the East Asian family in East Enders. That could be cool. Wait, they don't have an East Asian. No, never. Oh, I don't think so. I've not seen them. No. I've not seen them. It's oh, actually, I saw um, um, a meme on on Instagram I mean. about um, you know how there's lots and lots of like hospital based drama. Yes. Mm. And it only took Grace Anatomy so many seasons to have Filipino nurses in it. <laughs> Like fifteen seasons, right? Yeah, like, and they were just like a really random character <laughs> in the background, like an extra. See, when my, many hospitals in the world wouldn't yeah. be able to run without Filipinos, they're not actually extras; they're actually just nurses. Yeah, probably <laughs> the <laughs> they won't cast it at all. <laughs> they were just they in the background. Even, like, paid. <laughs> so yeah, and I know I don't think any there's any major storylines. That involves um, a Filipino nurse in any of the any of the hospital yeah. shops. Which... Where is Grey's Anatomy's 
based. Seattle. Um, Seattle, yeah. In USA. USA. Oh, USA. <laughs> My brain. <laughs> <laughs> you like Utah? USA? Oh, oh USA. Seattle. Seattle. I feel like I should have yeah. a different background than mine, because you can't really see my hair. Yeah, you kind of just mm -hmm. blend in with your chair. <laughs> Which is kind of nice, because actually my hair is such a state right now. Yeah, same. So. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I put my hair up in a ponytail. So issue of representation to <laughs> issue of backgrounds. To... <laughs> What's next? <laughs> um, 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 um. What are you going to do for your birthday? Do you have Today, anything planned? Um, I um, I'm waiting for Luke. We're going to go to to a photography photography. I think it's photography. It's like an art show. Oh, okay. of, um, Tom, Tom of Finland. Have you heard of him? No. No, so I, I didn't really know about him until about a week ago when Instagram decided that I'm the demographic for Tom of Finland's <laughs> works. But basically he's um he's an erotic art artist. Oh. Nice. I guess he is erotic, but no, his work is kinda very homoeroticism. Yeah, homo eric yeah. is based. Um, he got really famous because um, in, I don't know when that was, but around a time when when he was basically doing a lot of his work, uh, pornography was illegal. So in the USA, yeah, there was like a ban oh. on gay, uh, on gay, um, gay related paraphernalia and and things mm. actually including um straight porn i think straight porn was also illegal so he would draw um really suggestive pictures mm. you can take pictures of of people mm. you risk yourself being taken for photography so he would draw them and he uh, this was also around the time when um uh, if you were a guy a gay guy you would have to be in, in closet or people would just assume that you're like this really effeminate kind of guy so, so vi in public visually people if you're effeminate they probably will just say you're a gay so what a lot of his work around the time was showing men in really homoerotic poses <laughs> But like traditionally very masculine men, Ooh. so lumberjack, mm. Um, mm. people on motorbikes, stereotypical, and, yeah, yeah, with obviously big bald mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he was. His name is Tuko, Tuko. His actual Finnish name is Tuko, but obviously when to to cater for the Western market, he decided to call himself Tom, and add. Of Finland, so people don't mistake where he's from. <laughs> so we're gonna see Tom of Finland. Yeah, we're gonna see an exhibition <laughs> of his work. Oh. And then I'm gonna go and see my mother <gasps> for food later. We love that. Yeah. Uh, a great day. Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break, like a quick ten minute break, uh, and Eric is gonna show us his homoerotic mm. poses. <laughs> <laughs> Out with tongue already. Oh, yeah. Did you know that the Adora podcast is also available on YouTube and Spotify? So you can listen to our conversations anywhere you go, whether it's commuting underground or, you know, gallivanting in the fields of the countryside. We are available everywhere.
Also, we have new content coming out soon. So if you're interested, please subscribe to our YouTube and show us some support. Same with Spotify. If you'd like to keep updated on all of our episodes, you can follow us on Spotify. I will come back. What else is in store t- today, John? Uh, I've got work at two o'clock, so you got make work sure we done by then. Oh yeah. Um, how did you like? How did you like the uh, the little video that I put out? I wanna go to wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wanna go to wow. I think your friend was right though. You didn't try like the patisseries, like the cakes. Oh yeah, okay, and they definitely. are the ones that kind of like stand out to me the most when I think of what. And mm. um, obviously you had the pan and stuff. Um, yeah, look really good. What was, what was the name of the what was the name of the ramen shop again? Uh, Monahan. That's it. Monahan. Monahan. I've never heard of it. Yeah, which is great because mm. now I, I want to go because it's like a new thing. Yeah. So Noda and I are gonna do a rival. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. sure. yeah, I'm gonna do it on my channel as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you do gosh. on Eric does digital or Eric does food or whichever channel oh, you're no. doing. Yeah. I'll have it as part of my vlog for that in a London vlog. <laughs> no, not the competition. <laughs> That's it. Healthy competition. We'll, we'll just, like pay homage to you. It's like, oh, we were inspired by this video that our friend John did because we did yeah. know about this ramen. If you're interested in going. And you can be part in part of our video as well because yeah. we all have our cameras, so you can be. Jesus, <laughs> the only thing that I regret not being able to do for that like whole episode was that I wasn't able to get enough uh, B-roll shots because uh, yeah. I still I'm still am a little bit anxious when it comes to like whipping out a massive well, not massive but like my phone camera and just recording people. Phone camera is fine, though. It's like um, when you have in everywhere. when you have gear like oh. on top of it, it's a bit a bit much. Because I I did feel a bit like a few stairs. <laughs> you, I was there will recording. be stairs. Yeah, which You're, I, I, it's I like need to get used to. social anxiety. Yeah, because yeah. You, there will be stairs, like regardless, right? Yeah. Um, and that's something that you will have to overcome to be an in real life blogger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll probably get people who hate you as well. Oh, Why you bring yeah. the camera out, commenting, so Yeah. I thought like Casey Neistat says, bring your camera out and just assume it's okay until people tell you it's not okay, then you can put it back. Mm. Yeah, if you're if you're in public spaces then it should be fine anyway. Mm. Um well not not it should be fine, but it is fine. It's mm. you're well within your right to Actually, wait. Restaurants are not public spaces. They're private spaces. I would just record everywhere. I, if, if anyone has yeah. a problem, they would speak to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's... if they work, let's say they're working there and they're at the till, I probably won't record their face, but mm. maybe their hands and the item. Mm. With their permission, um, of course. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> I'll just, I won't, I'll just say... Like this is what I do for my like stories on Instagram. If I'm view- if I'm recording like something in a restaurant, I'll just say I'm just recording, and then they usually say just not my face. I'm like okay. Oh, okay. Maybe. So I don't ask, can I record? It's too much. If there's too much space for them to reject, so if you just say oh, I'm doing this, mm. and then yeah, they'll be like okay, or don't record my face. You're more assertive that way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should have confident. you on the next shoot of a. Uh, yeah, course. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it. I want to go to Hoko. I want to go to so many places. <gasps> Spoilers, oh, it's not some... meant to be mentioned. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, shit. Sure. Um, there's. We can go to. There's another one, Murgahan. Burger the hands. world's. Murga. The, the world's longest noodles Ooh. in London. Oh, we like long noodles. <laughs> It's really long noodles, like, yeah, I think it's like the world's longest or the longest one in London or something like that. Mm. Murga, like burger with an M, ham. Mm. Murga ham and the, the, biang biang, the biang biang noodles. 
Bang, bang. Um, there's a ramen place that I found. It's quite cheap. Called uh, Yokocho, at Hedden Street, off just off Regent Street. I've it been means- there. Yeah, that one. I, that one with the okay. yeah, yeah. It's like a, oh, there. It's what I would imagine Japan overload to be, <laughs> like Tokyo overload. It's it's fairly quiet. It's got really good decor, so great for um, B rolls. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Customer service is crap. Yes, super crap. Yeah, super crap. Um, I actually didn't try the ramen last time I went. I just had their like croquettes and their famous soda drink, but I haven't had a ramen there yet. Ooh, and then downstairs you've got like some cool stuff, which if you watch uh, the video, you see. Mm, I if we go there, I haven't been to the downstairs. downstairs. I oh. Didn't even know there was a downstairs. I thought downstairs was just the lose. No, it's um, it's more Japan like downstairs. I would say uh, downstairs is like the booths. Okay, I will. That in Japan I'm, when I'm you eat alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I tried two of their ramens. I can't remember the name of them, but because I remember, I went there for. For I want to say lunch, lunch and dinner. Yeah, and they do, for a lunchtime. I think they do mm. like a special cheaper menu. Oh. oh, okay. Where you have like three different ramens to choose from how, how yeah. cheap are you talking though because like i'm pretty sure the last time i went it was like around it was around the 15 under 15 yeah so that is the, cheap. the lunch menu i think the ramen that i got was 9.99 oh, okay and then the normal dinner menu which is probably the same din- the same ramen was like they go up to 13 to 15 maybe 14 14 to 16 something like that Wow. Yeah. So, but that's kind of like um, go to Google and Google Barbie movie. It's kind of the same as <laughs> uh, Wagamama and other like Tonkotsu is also like fifteen pounds now. Show you ramen. Yeah. The one Ichiba and um, like Tonkotsu, other... you and there's another one. Bone Daddy? No. Mm. We love Bone. Bone Daddies. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like bone Daddy. daddy. Um, the Kanada, <laughs> Kanada wa? Kanada, Kanada, yeah, that's it. Kanada, Kanada, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their ramen is also <laughs> around £15. <gasps> well, what's your niche? Is it like you want to look for cheap eats or just Asian food? Like what's what you're trying to grasp? What's, you know, what you're showing your audience, John? Uh, well... The idea behind Foodie Crawls was that we can promote these like local businesses, obviously. Um, hopefully affordable, <laughs> but a bit impossible in central London. Yeah. Um, but the way that w- I wanted to do it was that each episode will be featuring like a different cuisine. So the first episode was Japanese. Uh, next episode, uh, I'm thinking of Hong Kong uh, food. Uh, I do also want to cover Filipinos, like Filipino cuisine, but like, I, I have no idea. Kasenkin. I, I don't know any places apart from that yeah, one I wanna, place. I want to try that. I want to try that. Like, we can go Kasenkin. It's the one above Sort of. The, the, no. the, yeah. No, that's, that's nice. only it place that I know nice. Yeah. Would you go at lunchtime or dinner time? For, oh, for the shoes. For your... Or? Yeah, for your shoots. Um, I would say lunchtime, but because of the way our schedules work, it will probably differ and not be lunchtime, probably in the evening, but yeah. I think lunchtime is better because it's quiet and you've got more light. Mm, yeah. Definitely. So it's easier to, like, it's less crowded. Whereas at dinner, you've you've got lots of people coming in and out, and mm, yeah. maybe not as easy to record. If you're also not doing any work, like work work, trying to go in the weekdays is a lot better. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I could probably do like a few weekdays. Yeah. You just need to tell me when. When are you free? <laughs> right now, from the top of my head, it's September. Oh my god! I can I can try and make it work. I'm very like got a lot of things going on because I've got a wedding to go to. I've got a Hindu to do. My mum's seventieth birthday, okay. and so there's a lot going on. But if you tell me a few dates, mm. preferably for me Thursday or Friday, works. Mm. Yeah, busy girl. I am busy girl. Mm. Okay. Um, I have two jobs on a YouTube channel and social life and gym life and cooking cleaning. I'm back on the I wanna say thirtieth of July. Okay, so August. Yeah. Oh, that's a really long wait. That's much might, might be too long for your job. So you can I'm do other things. One, mm. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I'll see. He's thinking. I'm always thinking. I think different cuisines is good, but then it's nice when you build up a community. They can vote in mm. the comments, or they can vote like, "Oh, try this cuisine next." Like mm. Nigerian, Persian, you know, Sri Lankan. Mm. Those different cuisines, they might vote. But then keeping the niche is also quite good as well. Yeah, because like I will only follow. Like, there's certain people that I follow that it's like, they do purely cheap Asian food in London. Follow. Yeah. I might If do... it's too much, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't care about Italian food. So... I might do um, a £20 meal. Like, in... set a budget thing. In Just central so that... London. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. See how, I've seen see it. how far your £20. Pounds... I've seen the rules. Yeah, I've seen the rules. Sure. Yeah, I love those ones. Like, what can twenty pound get you? And then in Chinatown, and then you go and oh, yeah, great fun. Especially with the cost of living crisis right now, <laughs> oh, that's quite topical. Oh my god, I was at a job uh, <clears throat> earlier this week, and uh, I overheard one of the one of my colleagues saying that they don't believe that the cost of living crisis is a thing. What do they believe then? That is just that there's no cost of living crisis. That is just fine. How rich are they? They don't look rich. <laughs> they do look they crazy though. Do they live with their parents? No, it's quite an old woman. What? Well, because she's living off her pension. <laughs> Work for it. Yeah. What do you mean? Old... There's no. She probably either lives in a council crisis. flat. Um, or she owns she her... Doesn't go out. She yeah. doesn't go she out. She doesn't go out. Exactly. She probably doesn't go out, doesn't watch news, and probably doesn't like, eat a variety of foods. Yeah. I remember when, um, like, speaking of ramen, Wagamama's ramen used to be just eight pounds. Wagamama's shit, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in the same vein, I remember, um, um, what's it? I don't remember clearly. <laughs> Big, Mac, never go Mac, on Big yeah. Mac meal used to be, I think if you, when I first came, when I first came to the country, it was like three pounds fifty. For a meal. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like <gasps> it's before yeah. your time, John. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, when you were a wee little baby, John. Yeah. Oh my it god. was like ninety nine p for an ice cream, wasn't it? For a flake. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. Um, three ninety nine for a medium Big Mac meal, and then they steadily went up to four thirty nine. How much is it nine? Five ninety nine now or six nine? Portions got smaller. It's like yeah. six six nine to nine now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, Go, yep, yep, going yep. back to um, Amy's point about flakes being like nine nine p. I I went to a park uh, quite a while ago, and the ice cream trucks. They're five pounds now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're so yeah. expensive. And it's still called 99, right? Yeah! It's five pounds, yeah, it's five pounds. He said, why? <laughs> it's... Yeah, that's quite nuts. It's so that's insane nuts. how much the bloody prices have just gone up. You said, what? <laughs> it's, it is crazy. 
Need a pay rise. Yeah. We're not getting any. That's why everyone's striking. God. But also... I will get a pay rise until two years. One year. I think it's every two years that I spend in the NHS, I go up a little bit, like 50p or something, I don't know. You work in the NHS? <laughs> yeah. Bruh. <laughs> we do different bands. Like band pay. And each band from like, like band four, band five, band six, each band has increments. So what? like every two years, you get a little bit of a jump. Not a big jump, but... Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Hey, what do you do in the NHS, Nods? I'm a CBT therapist. I work with mental health. Bruh, you thought she was I work with private? GPs, <laughs> I work with... I'm not private, no. I, I don't think I'll do private yet. Why not? I want to... What, what is have... the difference? Apart from, obviously, public and private. <laughs> Well, the difference is that you um, become your own boss, so you have to get your own clients. Oh, You have okay. to do your own insurance. Um, it's very common for people who are at my level now out, out of working mm. to go part-time mm. and then do part-time uh, private work. Mm. But I've instead gone down like a creative route of content creation mm. and then... Maybe, I don't know, something might happen from there. Like, I don't know yet. But... Wait, are you going to be the new, uh, the next Dr. K? Dr. K. You know who Dr. <laughs> K is, right? <laughs> Dr. K is amazing. <laughs> I could never get on his level. He's so incredible. I actually paid for some of his courses. Oh. Because uh, they're, they're so good. Yeah, and I want to support him. Okay. He does a lot of great work. I've been getting a lot of, like, Dr. K TikToks on my For You page now. And it's just Yeah, he's incredible. He's so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, someone for the NHS. Um, I've recently saw a headline saying that, uh, what was it? Teacher or government jobs are like now getting a pay rise. Yes, yeah. we uh, got a little bonus. A little. When I say little. Uh, is it like 0.01%? People people often describe it as a slap in the face oh. kind of bonus. Damn. It's a bit like, here, here you go. Um, that's for your striking. Yeah, like less than £2,000. Damn. So... I don't know how much mine would equate to, but it's 6.5 for teachers. I think there's a vote that went on last week um, and the vibe is that we are um, rejecting it. We're yeah. rejecting 6.5. Because it's too low. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think since the rate of, the rate of inflation is like 12% or 11.11%. 11. 11 it's, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, around that. Yeah. So it will not even cover... Like, as soon as the money went into my bag, it just left again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh. Damn, with all these strikes happening. Jesus. <laughs> so many strikes. Oh, apparently the inflation rate is 6.4 in June 2023. Um, but over over so many years, like, I, I don't actually know, so don't take me. I should really know because that's part of, like, a working life as an adult. But... Over the so many years, the teachers have not had any pay rises because of the austerity measures that the Tory government have imposed. Um, we're like really, we really, really, really underpaid. underpaid. Mm. Yeah. Um, effectively getting pay cuts every year. Mm. Because of inflation. And it's not going up. And but, you work loads, like loads of hours. Mm, yeah. Outside of. Outside of the your working hours on your holidays, you still need to work. Uh, yeah, I I have to plan my curriculum for September now when I'm on holiday. Yep, and marking and meetings. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, so, well, there's also the option get pay rise. Of not planning and then just swinging it, winging it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that won't be good. That won't cut it. 
Because we might yeah. get Ofsted a dish here and oh, not yeah. be caught out. Mm. I mean, I guess you can, but it's not. It's not good practice. But it is. So everyone is demanding more attention and more money. Like even a school is a business, right? Because you want the parents mm. to spend more money. Mm. Buy this uniform for this amount. Buy these books. Buy that. Sign your, you know, everything because it goes back to their business, right? Mm. It's their merch. You have to buy their merch. Buy their merch. Yeah. But then NHS is very similar. You know, even in my field, it's like, oh, you need to see this many people, and by this time they need to score this, you know, this on their questionnaire, and you need to do this, and make sure you do that, and mm. get as many people through as possible because we've got targets to reach, and if we don't reach that, then the government won't fund us, and they'll cut, you know, the sector. So it's like, whoa. <laughs> it's not cute, girl. It's not cute being an adult. Not cute. No, it's not. That's why we're into content creation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't know how the whole SAG AFTRA equity strikes are going. Because I, I don't yeah. know. It, huh? SAG AFTRA, what's that? S so uh, SAG AFTRA is like the whole, is that like full name of the strike? Uh, oh, I mean, for, your, for the writers. Uh, writers, actors, screenplay, yeah, um, crew. Oh. I've seen your post on uh, your Instagram, John, about how Netflix isn't giving up like zero point something something, or yeah. Disney isn't giving up something. So it was, it's like point of their pay, right? Was it? What is it saying that it they're actually, not giving up the money or something? Insane. Um, so they're refusing to essentially accept the terms of the strikes um, because they find it ridiculous qu quote um, that we're asking well these people are asking for more money um, there was a case there was like a someone came out and said something about like how they couldn't afford their cabs to go to work uh, I'm pretty sure it was one of the actresses for Orange is the New Black. Like the... I can't remember. But essentially, because Orange is the New Black is on Netflix, which is like a streaming service, um, supposedly, because it is a streaming service and it runs for how many years it goes, uh supposedly that these actors and actresses are meant to get like residuals residuals are basically like royalties for like but for actors where mm. you get money based on how many plays it gets i could be completely wrong i could be in com completely inaccurate but that's how i see it um but basically this actress didn't get much like she got I think $27 out of like the whole season, which is not a lot at all. But apparently it, it wasn't just her, it was like many other actors who aren't getting money for shows that they're in that aren't like massive films, but are massive like TV shows that are on like Netflix or Paramount Plus or Disney Plus or whatever, HBO Max. Mm. Yeah. Does the salary not get agreed before uh, the filming? Um, I'm not 100% sure for like the bigger actors and actresses like a, a level above mine which is my level being like background extra the way that mm background actual works is that we we get paid like a base rate and then we get paid travel we get paid like missing lunches or like missing breakfasts basically we get a, a, a whole bunch of fees added on to our pay and that what makes that's what that's what we are paid 
Um, unfortunately, there is also like the the gray area, which is like visual effects. So with visual effects, we get scanned, like a whole 360 scan of like our entire body uh, in costume. Oh. Um, that is to basically, again, not 100% accurate, but from what I know is that they use that image, that whole scan of us, to replicate us in different scenarios without actually using us, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah without I've us heard about actually that. being there. Yeah, and we're not getting, we're, yeah, we're not getting paid. No. Uh, for that usage, we are getting paid for that scanning, but that's it. Yeah, we're and not they will ask the... you consent for your um, replica to be used in different ads and films. So let's say you're a vegan, mm. but they use your replica to do a beef burger ad. They don't care. You've already signed over your replica to them. Mm. They can just use it. Even yeah. after you pass, they will still use the replicas. That's what people are saying now. Yeah. The future of advertising. Yeah. Not. Because of our digital data that we put out there through filters, through face scanning, we've got a lot of digital footprint. So even when we pass, they're saying that they'll still use, you know, the people's digital footprint and then do all sorts of ads and things like that for free. Mm. Who needs to ever pay anyone now? Yeah, that is true. Another massive they, thing, yeah. They'll start <laughs> training. They'll start training AI. Yeah. To to even like record your own voice. That's exactly so what I was going to go into. Yeah. Because obviously, even... the film industry is very afraid of the AI now, the AI, because obviously. AI can write you a whole like film script and we like we've seen plenty of examples of people doing that like there's people writing the whole entire script uh, using AI and then just filming it or not even filming it but using AI to actually create the actual video and audio and it it's insane because <laughs> The amount of jobs that are just like being cut right there is just nuts. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's why it's time to upskill ourselves now. Yeah. Always diversify yeah. yourself. That's correct. Yeah. I honestly don't know how it's going to end up for me in the in my career path. But, but be know. the AI if you can't beat it. Be be, it. be the AI. <laughs> you can I don't know learn coding. I don't know. Yeah. Some equip yourself with some skills that might help. Yeah. Somehow. Well, people's skills will still be needed. I think yeah. that's not a big thing right mm -hmm. now. It's like um. Being able to use AI effectively is where it's gonna go ahead. So if you're if you're in the script writing field, um, getting AI to generate the script, but also proofreading it, adding a little bit more character to it, changing it so that it includes, you know, part of the brief that you're working with, so things like that. Like being able to um, prompt AI but also curate what AI is producing is quite a lot of where it's heading because yeah. right now people are like saying, oh yeah, we're not going to entertain any AI related work. Like you, you already see quite a lot of like artists saying like no to AI and some Reddit boards are saying like, if you submit AI work, then you'll just get banned. But that's only because right now people can still tell that it was done by AI. Mm. Yeah. But probably in six months time, a year from now, people won't be able to know. Yeah. Um, and having to uh, like police that is going to be like really impossible. So I think working smartly with AI is probably 
how the world's careers are gonna move towards like right yeah. now um, you can like a lot of people a lot of programmers obviously have gone and done universities and like spent a long time learning how to code but right now you can go on 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 chat gpt and you can tell you can tell it to give you the piece of code for your particular problem and it's more about knowing what components you need mm. so and then assembling them together so if you're a nutritionist like Noda's doing quite a lot of, like health stuff at the moment um, you could either scour the internet for all the information of like nutrition that you need but why do that when you can just say right um, recommend to me a really nice healthy meal recipe mm. and how you would turn that into like a, a business would be you would speak to your really loyal customers and say I will make you a bespoke recipe for what you cook for for your cooking ability for your interest and for your dietary needs mm. yeah and that, that's yeah like being I agree to, AI to 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 do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and what you're doing is literally you're just you're like humanizing it humanizing it and in some ways also probably not the best way to say it but you're like the waiter yeah um, yeah because you're you're not between... cooking yeah, yeah you're not cooking but what you're doing is you're like giving the experience to whoever needs it and that's quite a lot of like yeah where the humanity can come oh. in but... i've never seen that approach before but i like how you said work with ai yeah because it, it's just it's it's going to be like a like a tide you know people will always try and build wall um on incoming seas but eventually the sea will eventually like flood you mm. yeah and you either build a house that can float so that it doesn't matter how high the sea goes your house will float <laughs> but mm. if you just yeah you're prepared walls, you're not like oh it's taking over and oh yeah oh it's going to be yeah. it's going to be tough i do feel like or well, from my perspective ai although in the creative field it does amplify like product productivity yeah but i do feel like letting ai uh sort of create this let, let's use like script writing for like a big budget movie i feel like using ai to like i don't know write you a script it it doesn't have the same I guess the love from the script writer if that makes sense. So like well, that's, where, what, that's what, where you would come in. That's what, where you would say how can I make this a little bit more like to what you would like it to be. Um, so you're you, using it as a guideline, and then you're yeah. editing it a bit to add a bit of your character into it. Yeah, like a skeleton. Rather than, and then you, it's like I use a I use ChatGPT to write my YouTube biography. Yeah. Right. No one knows. Yeah. I edited a little bit. Done. Yeah. In seconds. So mm. being able to tell like how much is too much, and how little is too little, like being able to be critical. Yeah. I think really important that's the skill set to upscale yourself yeah. now is the ability to actually like jack said to eric said to put into G chat gpt mm -hmm. because there's a special skill to know what you want to ask from chat gpt it's not just write down anything like google the skill is to actually know your components what you're actually asking from gpt that's where the skill comes in mm. yeah like i have students who are really mad for wanting to learn how to make game uh games mm -hmm. on unity and quite a lot of it obviously, obviously like there's the what what you would see as the front end like what the ui would look like but also on the back end how the programming will work to move the things so when you press left or right it will actually do what you want it to do but if you if you just because you could try it now like you can ask uh, on chat GPT, write me a code to make a uh, flappy bird because it won't be able to like do it in all in one go because the flappy bird is so huge but you can like chunk it down so write me a code that will move flappy up and down 
right? Yeah, you've got to be really specific and learn how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but if you don't have an idea of how to decompose the problem, because that's not part of like your skill set of making big problems small problems, I think that's a really huge skill in it itself. Um, then yeah, you will get not you, but people will get. Swept away by the ocean, by the sea. Yeah. yeah. I have to go soon. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. One last yeah. quick question. So, obviously, ChatGPT or whatever AI service, uh, do you find that letting AI do these like creative things like script writing or producing a movie or whatever? that it's more forgetful uh, and it's less, I guess, impactful. I don't know. I haven't seen a f movie that's made completely by AI. But in terms of like letting AI do these random things for you, like writing a nutritional diet or like... <gasps> well, maybe that could be a video know, scheduling. next time, right? I think as humans, we've always wanted to increase our efficiency, right? Which is why we've created so many things around us, like calculators, whatever, right? We could mm. easily calculate, sure, but why do it when there's a calculator there? So as humans and the way we are, we like efficiency. So I think maybe people would spend time on learning AI to create that efficiency so that they, they can master other skills in other areas yeah. rather than using that time to then... It's still part of what they love, for example, but they would rather give that to AI because AI is really good at that, mm -hmm. but they can use their human skills to do something else even more efficiently. So it's creating the output. It, it, it might be very similar results, but maybe less stress on the human because mm. yeah. you're working together with the AI, so the AI can take some load. The human can then put more into networking or whatever, I don't know, and then mm -hmm. the impact will be... I so yeah, but just less stress. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but wouldn't but it mean it, like less passion towards the well, whatever you're doing? It depends. Passion doesn't always equals hustle, yeah. I don't think. Uh, yeah. That's just a very capitalist way of viewing it. Mm. That's what they, they want us to believe, right? You only work hard and that equals passion, but this is a, it's working smart versus working hard and all that stuff, I think. Yeah. Mm. I, I think if you're... Um, it, it depends on what your outcome is meant, like the purpose of your outcome is supposed to be. So if you're going to be making big, big budget films, um, l let's say there's an industry where films are literally just being made by AI. Um, and because people are actually very, that, they're not that smart. <laughs> mm. um, and what seems to be trending is seems that seems to be the one that makes a lot of money right so eventually there's going to be a, a flood of ai created movies that people will actually like and they won't know whether it was done by ai or not mm. uh, or care or care or either they they like they marketed it in such a way that it fooled people and they only found out about it much later on but mm. the bottom line in that aspect is that they've made bajillions of money right mm. um do you want to miss out on that boat of like oh this is like an opportunity for me to to gain money so that's your purpose is to gain money right but if it is like a passion project where you you enjoy the skill and the process of creating something then yeah probably ai is not going to be for you but in general, when when it when you're weighing up those two different things, whether your money or passion, generally, the one who ends up doing the passion, at least in the in the short run, don't get a lot of money, mm. but they get a lot of like life satisfaction out of it, and probably AI is not going to be quite useful in that regard. Mm. Um, to, to further what you want like for life satisfaction so it depends I think people will have to be critical at to what as to what they want the outcome to be what is the purpose of using AI 
and how is it either making yourself efficient, like what Noda said, or how do you make satisfaction? How do you get satisfaction out of that? Mm. Or who knows? And we'll just see. My, last, my last point is that there will be people who will still not use AI. Mm. Like mm. there's still people out in the world who still might not use, I don't know, a tractor. I don't know, right? So yeah. maybe there are always tools, right? In in a way we use things like farming, whatever. You can always upgrade your tools, but there will be some people who don't want to upgrade their tools. Mm -hmm. And I see AI as a tool in our modern world because we've gone from using, you know, like weapons and sticks that we've created to then automating that in in a tractor. And then now we're into this digital world. Obviously, now AI is a, is a new tool for us humans is where I see it. So there will be some people who refuse to do that and that's fine. They like it the old school way. Um, but I am always on the boat of let's just use what is around us mm. to make us better. Yeah. Okay. And it's up to us to push past the tool mm. and, you know, inject what we think is ourselves and like our own kind of brand or our own perspectives into whatever we produce in whatever tool that is necessary mm. yeah yeah okay. like you can make pasta from a pasta machine now right mm. or you can make it by hand mm. but so does one then say that person's got more passion or do the people really care when they eat it or can they inject their personality through other ways like branding marketing the source they create i don't know mm. yeah i think that, I yeah. I think people people are just really. I th this is me, a good topic. We can yeah. talk about it more in the next episode. It's kind of fun. <laughs> maybe for next but for next episode go. we could talk about like, um, are people so afraid of AI because they themselves don't actually know how to create? Yes. Where is the where is the security coming from? Is it that they're not yeah. confident themselves or like their yeah. abilities? Yeah. Or so where expensive. is where is it scarcity? Is it fear? Where is that coming from? The rise and fall of AI. Let's do that. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting wow. points, guys. Uh, all right. Noda, where can they find you? Where, what are you so, plugging? So I am plugging my YouTube. That is where all my energy is going at the moment. So you can find me on YouTube at Amy T. That's A-Y-M-I-T-E-E -E on my YouTube. And Eric, where can they find you? Um, what do you have uh, right now it's still Eric does digital, but actually there's nothing. There's new con. No, there's not much new content on there. But I will be making. Uh, I, I'll be revealing something new. Hopefully, <gasps> before is it our logo? <laughs> uh, yes, our logo. And, uh, <laughs> It'll be the, on, the ongoing <laughs> meme. <laughs> All right, and you can find us on Ad Oil PRD on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, and did I say YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. And you can also find me at John Acario. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>